of somebody who's a ride or die. Could be a friend, family member, or you know what? Maybe it's you. Think about how hard you would go for any of your friends if something really, really horrible happened to them. That man today is Isaac. Isaac is that ride or die, that man, that boy, that mother <laughs> Today, we're gonna sit down and check out his testimony because he has known Johnny Depp for decades. And based on his testimony, he can't believe that this is happening. I don't see a, a cut, a bruise, swelling, redness. It's just damn his face that she's going like this and showing me. There's a lot of emotion, passion, but what I also liked about it was Isaac comes off as incredibly genuine. So many people are, have been affected by this malicious lie that she started and she created oh, and it's beautiful. gone out the door beautiful. and around the world. But as usual, I implore you guys, Think critically, I accept your individual opinion. However, I will say, welcome to the most biased coverage on the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp case on YouTube. If you're an Amber Heard fan, you're not gonna like it here too much. Okay. Thank you for coming back. Yes. Um, were you still living in Penthouse 2 of the Eastern Columbia building on May 21st, 2016? Yes. Okay. Yes. Do you recall what you were doing that evening? Yes. What were you doing? I was out, it was evening time, I'm out in the neighborhood, and I'm on my way home. I get a phone call this from guy is a friend to, uh, who wants to know if I want to go out and eat. I said I just ate, but uh, I'm five minutes away from, from the Eastern Columbia building, home, and that, I go across the street, get something to eat, and uh, bring it up for takeout, and we'll go upstairs to my joint and we'll eat. May yeah. 2nd, what are they saying you happened on that day? at the Eastern Columbia building? Yeah. Around what time was that? 9.30. What happened after you met your friend? We went upstairs. Uh, can we pull up um, Plaintiff's Exhibit 116 again? <laughs> why please? do I feel, I've seen some clips of this guy, but why do I feel like he's about to be a tank, bro? He really looking at her like, any more questions? Ma'am? Your Honor, given that this has already been Admitted, I'd ask that it be published. All right, that's fine. You can publish it. You just can't see it. Was... Okay, he still has it. Mr. Bridge, is what it is... on the screen in front of you? Yeah. What is it? What is this about to be about? Hold on, let me see. Plot, plot, plan, attach. Is this the house? They're going to... <laughs> what happened in the house? Great. Yes. I'm going into this raw, guys, okay? Mr. Bridge, when you um, got upstairs that evening with your friend around 9.30, yeah. um, what did you see? What? Yeah, what did you see? We got out of the elevator and, you know, just like in the graph, you you make a left and then you turn the corner. When we walked out, I noticed on the floor there's uh, shards of glass. There's pieces of glass. Okay. And so, you know. He's a witness. He's seen something? Oh, no, something busted. Could be one of the sconces or something like that. And kept walking. Can you mark on the exhibit where you saw the broken glass that evening? Yeah. Mm. Oh, there's the little dot. Right there. Right <laughs> where you could go left or you could go that's right. Cool. If you wanted to go to the pool area, that's you could there's an exit that way. So you could either go right or you go left. You go left, you're in the apartment going in the hallway through the apartment, or you go right, right there in that spot. And did you continue on to your penthouse after you saw the broken glass? Oh, yeah. So we walk, walk around, and then we make the turn. Okay. We hang the right past the penthouse five. Right here. And Anna? we stop okay. right in front of... Right here. Right here. What? And why did you to stop the dot, right there? To the dot, Isaac. Oh, stopped in front of here, pen, penthouse one, which is more, it's more... Right there. Okay. Because there's this puddle of wine, huge puddle of wine on the floor that's in front of the door, and there's a, a wine, uh, the splashed wine that's dripping down the wall. And so we stopped, and I'm looking at it and going, look at this. These, someone must have got hammered. These guys probably had a party. Okay. And, and at that point... I have no right idea then, where this is going. As soon as I said that, the door opens up, and it's Josh Drew. Who's he Josh? pokes his head out the door, only enough for his head to come out. And he's pretty bug-eyed and looks distraught. And I look at him and I go, what's up with the spilt wine? <laughs> and I figure and I get an explanation or whatever. 
And uh, he says, he looked at me and just said, rough day, had a rough day. He did? And at that point, I got concerned and said to him, because I'm friends with, with him. Yeah. Who is just smashing bottles on the ground because they had a, a rough day? With the wine in it. He said there was a pool of wine. If you had a rough day, you got to drink that. No, I'm just kidding. Don't drink alcohol. You know, I got concerned. I said, hey, you okay? You want me to help you with something? You Are they help? covering for something? He said, no, it's okay. We got it. And I said, okay. And I, me and my buddy took off and went into my place. And what did you do after that? Keep my buddy ate. Uh, I believe he had pizza from across the street. So and, I uh, looked it up really quick and I looked up Josh Drew. He looks like some kind of chef or something like that. He has some kind of affiliation with Amber. He knows them. Maybe he's like a private chef or something. Let's find out. Let's see what happens. And, and look, when I say that I'm raw dogging these cases, it, it means that we're I'm blind reacting to them. I don't know all the details with you. Uh, on this channel or this stream, I, I'm not going to come in here all the time and be like, hey guys, here are all the facts of the things. I've done a bunch of research on this. No, I just put the video on and I tell y'all what's going on. We're figuring it out together. Uh, we talked. We yapped for a while and, you know, could, could be, I could yap, so it could, you know, it could take, we were there probably an hour and change or something like that. Then, uh, he's, you know, we're done. So it's, I walked, I walked him out and walked down, went to the elevator, walked out, went to the elevator. We went downstairs. I walked him out the door, finished the, to finish the conversation that we were having. And I said, all right, see ya. And then I went back in. I went upstairs and I went to bed. Okay. Around what time was that that you went back into the Eastern Columbia building? You know something, it's, it's, if we got there at like around 9.30 and we, we're talking, I don't know, an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, you know, somewhere around 11 o'clock, I would think. Mr. Baruch, can you um, describe for the jury the events of the next day, May 22nd, 2016? Yes. Okay. It's my birthday. May 22nd is my birthday. Happy birthday, Isaac. I wake up. I end oh, up uh, texting. Johnny and saying, hey, I'm going to be in town because he's not staying. at the Oh, by the way, if you guys didn't know, because, you know, we got to be fair here. Uh, yesterday was actually Amber Heard's birthday. So I do want to take a second to wish her a <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It really was a birthday, but I don't give a shit. <laughs> he's, in building. he's staying in a house in, in town. Okay? And uh, so I texted him. It's my birthday. I said, listen, I'm going to be in town. Uh, I'm going to come by and to, uh, to have a birthday drink. Okay. I didn't hear from him. Okay, you know, okay, okay. Isaac's going to go get a birthday doing. drink the next day. What, is, what happens here? But, so it was uh, around t uh, noon, noon time, uh, that I, so I left. I walked out of my apartment, and I go through the hallway, as you see the graph. I go through the hallway, and I turn the corner from Penthouse Street, and uh, as I'm walking down, well, who do I see? I see a group of people. It's okay. a guy in black clothes, uh, a, a black shirt, black pants, Amber Heard. Okay. And I see Josh Drew, who's leaning up against the door, and the door is open. This door is open. Something's going on. And as I'm walking up, I'm saying, hey, what's up? What are you guys doing? And then Amber turns to me as I'm walking up. Amber turns to me, and she says, uh, Johnny came by last night. He got violent. So I'm changing the locks on one, three, and five. What? And I'm look at her, and, and she goes, oh, and don't worry about two. You're okay. That's what Amber said? Point, Aren't they in his house or something? This is so weird to me because it's so... I don't want to say everyone responds this way, but to me, this is out of character for abuse victims. For Amber Heard to just walk up and say... Johnny got violent last night, so I'm taking care of all of this. Do you know why? The reason why I feel like Amber's behavior is so out of character for abuse victims is because generally, we don't like to tell people about our partner's violence. We don't like to say any violent thing that's happening because we're so ashamed and embarrassed that we're still in the relationship. So her just walking out and being like, Johnny got violent last night is so strange to me. Unless the relationship was completely over or something. I feel like sometimes DV victims, once they really feel like they're out, but even so, not really, because you're still scared 
that the abusive person is going to retaliate. So you just don't tell people. You just keep your head down and you just stay quiet unless you're the abuser yourself and you're just trying to get the first word in so that you can control the narrative. Very odd, very odd that she would do that. One side, and you have Josh Drew. Okay, let's see what else. On one side of the door, you got the two locksmiths with the door open working on it. Sunlight's, the, the sun's coming through the door, sunlight from windows. And then Amber is in, is in front of me and there's the security guy. And, and that we're two feet away from each other talking. And she introduces me as she as she's finishing saying, uh, oh, don't worry about your uh, your apartment. She says, oh, and this is a security guard that I got that who's going to be hanging around. And she I got introduced. She introduced me to him and I shook she's his hand. She's trying to set it up. Card, which I lost. And uh, and that and I'm kind of taking this in and going and I said, wait, what what happened? The security guard? What's, what's going on? And uh, at that point, Josh Drew. A security guard is a really, really, really nice conversation piece for somebody that's trying to set up abuse allegations. It's a, it's a really nice talking point. Oh, why is that big guy following you around? Johnny Depp's been hitting me? Like, ah! Me and gives me the high sign. Like, hey, I'll, you know, follow me. I'll, uh, I'll tell you in private. And, uh, Mr. Rich. When you were speaking with Ms. Hurd, how close were you standing to her? Like I said, two, I'm two feet, a foot and a half, two feet away. We're all two feet. And how was the lighting in that area? There's lights in the hallway, but we're standing in, and we're standing in an open doorway that the wall this, uh, is all windows. Sunlight's coming through and it's, it's, you can operate in this light. There's that much light. Did you notice any marks on her face when you were speaking with her? No. <laughs> he Did you said, see any bruises? He said, no. no. Did you see any redness? No. Did you notice any swelling? No. Oh my God. Did it God. look like Ms. Heard was wearing- Because Isaac saw her the day after she claimed it happened. I wonder if Josh Drew testifies. This guy. Wearing any makeup? No. Had you seen her wearing makeup before? Yeah. And you had seen her not wearing makeup before? Yeah, I've seen, like I said, with fake doing with a face mask, doing a face mask, no makeup, hanging around, uh, waking up in the morning, uh, no uh, uh, with makeup, okay. glammed out to go out. And it's, it's three and a half years of seeing her in different uh, different forms. Did you speak with Mr. Drew about anything at that point? Well, yeah. Is Josh Drew on our side or not? That, uh, uh, hey, what's going on? And he gave me the high sign to like, hey, follow him. We went into my apartment and had a conversation. And what happened um, after you had that conversation with Mr. Drew? We left the apartment and we'd, we'd go walking back uh, towards uh, Penthouse One. And as I'm walking back, I'm, I say to Amber, as I'm walking up, he hit you? And she goes, yeah, he threw a phone at me and hit me. Uh, and I'm looking, because I- Dude, had... is it just me or does it seem like a lot of Amber's allegations come from 2016 with her saying that Johnny was full on hitting her or hurting her and one thing she claims that Johnny had pushed her up against the wall and he was punching her and punching her and she was screaming and nobody came to help and then like whenever she's confronted about did Johnny hit you it turns into well yeah he threw this at me or yeah he threw this at me y'all y'all was throwing a bunch of stuff at each other like mm. just seen her it's two feet away and I'm going where and she puts her head out she puts her face out like that for me to look at her, the right side of her face. And I'm looking, but at that point also, I'm looking and I turn, I turn around, get on the other side, we're in the doorway. So I'm on this side with the light shine and this and way from- Also, another thing too, one reason why I pick out the inconsistencies so much and try to really explain them and highlight them is, is because everyone's been saying it. Amber Heard is a detriment to the whole movement of people that were actually harassed and people that are real DV victims, truly. And so in order to prevent a future where people start saying, oh, this lady could be lying, she could be Amber Heard. We have to point out the exact 
things that Amber Heard did so that we know the difference. This case with Amber is like, it's such obvious revenge and bullshit. And you have to be able to look at a case of a real victim and an Amber Heard and really know the differences between each one. Because otherwise, people are going to be saying, oh, she could be Amber Heard it. And you have to be able to say, no, Amber Heard did this. This person did this. Amber Heard did this. This person did this. Critical thinking, guys. And in order to do that, we have to pick this stuff apart. In the doorway with the lights above. And oh my God, why? And she's got a face out like this, looking, you know, to show me. And I'm looking and I go, I inspect the face. I'm looking at her forehead. I'm looking at the side of a uh, side of her eye. I'm looking at her cheek. I'm looking at her chin. I'm looking at the other side of the face. I'm looking at the whole thing. And I don't see anything. Oh my God. I don't see anything to, to I don't see a, a cut, a bruise, swelling, redness. It's just Amber's face that she's going like this and showing me. So I'm not seeing anything. I back up and I'm making a joke. I make a joke going, well, she gets angry, I don't see doesn't anything, she? but maybe all the beauty from one side of your face to the other side of the face is outshining everything. So I can't see anything. And she's laughed and she's, you know, smiled. And I just looked at everybody and said, hey, this, it sounds nuts. And I went and I gave, I said, I gotta go. And I gave her a hug and kissed her on that side of the face. Kissed her on that side of the face. And then I left, said goodbye. What was her reaction when you kissed her on that side of the face? Nothing. Did she flinch? No. <laughs> he, he said, no. <laughs> Did you see Ms. Hurd again the next day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is way better So that's up. Monday, that was May 22nd, my birthday. So then, then the next day is uh, Monday, the 23rd. I had woken up uh, with a chest cold and uh, I heard a knock on the door and it's Amber. I went downstairs and I opened up the door. And when you opened the door, did you have a good view of Ms. Hurd? Absolutely, yeah. How was the lighting? Lighting's fine. Lighting from from outside and there's light from uh, my place. Yeah, so this, the lighting was great. Did you see any marks on Ms. Hurd's face at that time? No, same thing like the, the, the day before. There's no redness, there's no swelling, there's no bruises, there's no cuts, there's no nothing. This is Amber, looking like Amber. Did you notice what she was wearing makeup right now? For what? She didn't look like she was wearing makeup then either. What did Ms. Hurd say to you during that encounter? She was knocking on my door to see if uh, I would take uh, the house key, her house key, to let the cleaning lady in, because she had to go somewhere. And I, I, I woke up that day and I had some kind of chest cold thing. I was upstairs laying down. And so I, I looked at her and I said, hey, listen, I'm, you know, I, I, I'm feeling sick. I'm gonna be upstairs laying down this entire time for the day or whatever. And that, uh, so I, can, I'm not, I can't do it. And then uh, she stood there and, and uh, is like, well, I gotta figure out what to do. Like maybe if she was only dependent upon me to, to give the housekeeper the key, it's the same, the housekeeper is, it cleans both of our places. Okay. And uh, so I said, hey, listen, why don't you go ahead and take the key and put it in an envelope and bring it downstairs to the concierge, you know, one of the, and that's where the key will be. And tell Hilda, yeah. who is the okay. housekeeper, that uh, that's where the key is. And uh, that's it. And you're, you're set. And she was like, yeah, okay, I guess I could do that. And I'm looking, I'm three feet away from her. Two and a half, three feet away from her talking with her. And how long did that conversation last? Three minutes. Did you see Ms. Hurd again the next day? Yes, I did. Where did you see her? He's All right. Like, uh, you know what? I go down. To, um, One thing that Isaac is doing is he's actually building himself as a pretty credible witness because he was seeing Amber every day. He saw her three days in a row after this supposed incident on May 21st. I'm leaving the, my apartment on Tuesday. To go I like when the camera pans the cafe, back to Go her. get something hot to drink. I still haven't shopped or did anything for what's a chest cold. And uh, so I need, wanted something hot to drink. I go downstairs and uh, as I'm locking my door, that uh, all of a sudden a group of women uh, uh, walk, come up to Penthouse 3. Because in the okay. corridor on the graph, you can see we share the same corridor. So I closed, I'm locking my door and a group of women show up. Did you recognize who the women were? Three of them, yeah. Who were they? It was, you know something, I'm unsure. I, it was I don't understand this. Riddle me this. A lot of abuse happens behind closed doors. So much of it. It happens behind closed doors. But in this instance, Amber's whole story revolves around the fact that when Johnny gets drunk or he's 
abusing substances, which she apparently says that he constantly is. He loses himself and then, you know, he's out of control and he turns into the monster, right? That tells me that they're claiming that he's a person with no self-control that gets violent, especially when he's inebriated. So if he's completely unable to control himself and they're in this penthouse or this large building that has five or six penthouses and Josh Drew is here, this security guard is here, uh, there's always security guards around, there's maids, there's the concierge, there's a friend that's living here in the house, she's coming in with a group of girls. How come no one in three and a half years ever saw a bruise or ever witnessed a physical altercation? That is just one thing that doesn't make sense to me in this particular case because so many people were around constantly. Constantly. I don't understand. I do not understand. Five women, but it's uh, Amber, it's her sister Whitney, and it's uh, Mel uh, Melanie Iglesias who's a makeup artist for Johnny and, and Amber. Okay. And then there's two other women. The makeup artist, the I family. I don't recognize, but uh, not sure. Did you interact with the women at all? Well, I, I, after closing the door, Whitney, who calls me her spirit animal, came running came running down the, you know, down the, the hallway going, Isaac, spirit animal. And I'm, I'm going, hey, listen, I'm not feeling so hot. I'm not feeling so good, and I get duck under her arms, you know, stop. And I, I love you, but stop. And I duck under her arms, and, and, uh, and I go past, and I'm now passing the other ladies. I'm looking at them, and they're laughing of this whole scene. And then that was it. And then I walked, went past, and went down and got some hot tea. Oh, you're crashing on PC? You're doing on PC, too. During that encounter? It was a quick glance, but nothing, you know, nothing just, just shot out to me to, like, notice anything. Um, did you see Ms. Hurt again the day after that? Well, I saw again that day. Oh, can you describe that, please? <laughs> yeah, that on the way back from me being outside at the cafe, getting uh, having a, a tea, I come walking back in, and now all her, her and her, the women that she was with are coming back out. The doors of the lobby, it's all windows. It's God, great you know what would be so, you know what would be so funny, but so petty of me? If I went to Walgreens and I just bought that Milani kit and just, Covered up this bruise just to see how much can I really cover this up with that palette. This is such like a hard case to go through because on one hand, I don't want to put out too much stuff that could make people try to discredit legit DV victims. But then on the one other hand, Amber's fucking lying. Like this is so fucked. This is so messed up, dude. And somebody earlier in chat said abuse victims can hide their bruises. Man, I'm like, have you ever tried to cover up a bruise or a hickey or something on yourself with makeup? It doesn't cover up all the way. So these people seeing her multiple times in one day, it, you're just telling me it just, oh, come on, come on. This is the kind of stuff that stresses me out when it's like the answer is so obvious, but somebody's interjected one lie and now I have to think about it harder when the truth is right there. And the women, are, there's a table in the middle of the lobby and her, uh, her friends, or uh, I don't know if they're friends or not. I know three, you know, one's a sister and the other one's a friend. They're coming, they're walking on one side of the table and then she's on the other side of the table where I'm walking and now we're, wa we're walking past each other and she's, you know, of course, we're going to acknowledge each other and looking at each other. And now she's the sun shining right in our face. It's to my back because I'm walking in. And so that's like this and, and saying, all right, hey, all right, enjoy yourself. Have a good time or whatever, whatever you're doing, you know, and go by. And I went up and that was it. That was the second time that I saw her. And that's on Tuesday. Okay. And did you get a good look at her face during oh, that second encounter? Absolutely. The sun shining right on her face. Did you notice anything unusual about her face? Nothing. No, no, no uh, cuts, no bruises, no swelling, no uh, red redness, no. And this guy Damn. sounds like he gave it the Damn benefit of the doubt at first. And then did you see Ms. Hurt again the day after that? Yes, I did. And that's Wednesday, May 25th? That's right. Where did you see her? At that point, I was like, okay, I got to shop for something to, because uh, otherwise I'm not going to get rid of this chest cold. I, I'm going to go to the store and on the way back in between the garage and the building, there's this room with like vestibule, you know, that's, uh, that's, you have to walk through. And I'm coming in to go into the building and Amber and Whitney, her sister, are coming out of the building to go into the garage. And we met there. 
How long did you speak with them, if at all? Yeah, we spoke. That's so we're, we're facing each other. I'm with them, uh, Amber and Whitney, uh, st st across from me. We're two and a half feet, two feet away from each other, talking. Of course, and so we stop, of course, to say, "Hey, what's up? What are you doing? Where you going? Where you going? Where you coming from?" I have bags of food in my hand of, of stuff that I went and I bought. And so I said, hey, I'm coming from shopping. I finally bought myself some stuff to get rid of this chest cold thing. And uh, they go, and this, they're going to the uh, CVS. Hmm. And they look at me, and, they, and so uh, what's yapping, everything, everyone's smiling and stuff. And, oh, I didn't freeze. I'm just and listening. And she says, you sure we, you, we can't get you anything? Do you, how about we get you some aspirin or some, you know, some uh, cold stuff? I said, no, I think I got everything. And uh, that... And they said, you sure? And I said, yeah, yeah, of course, I got it. Don't, don't sweat it. And, uh, I, I, you know, a kiss or whatever. I got my hands. I can't hug or whatever. So, and then I was said to see you. And I went on, went up. And they went through the garage. That was the, that was, that was it that day. Did you have a good look at her face during that conversation? Yes. This room, yes, yeah. This room, it's, com it's, it's completely lit. That it's a spot, and there's a camera uh, taking, uh, 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 you know, cameras always on, a security camera, and it's all, always, and so it's got good lighting and stuff. Because this is a spot where if you use your, uh, your fob key to to go into this into the building, well, the door takes a long time to, you know, it's, it's one of those things with the uh, pressure thing that the, the door just doesn't close shut. It takes a while to for it to close. Someone could be in the garage who's not supposed to be in the garage, run and hold the door open. And that they, then they get into the apartment building, and then who knows? Some, maybe somebody gets ripped off. But so it's well lit for security reasons, and that there's a, there's a camera there it's taking pictures. Uh, yeah, know, he paints a very like does. illustrative story. Was Ms. Hurd wearing makeup during that um, discussion? Neither of them looked like they were wearing makeup at all. Whitney had this hat on. That uh, it was a fun hat or whatever, uh, and that no, no, no makeup. I don't, I don't even know Whitney to to be a a, a makeup person, and that uh, Amber, no, she looked like she was, you know, just natural Amber. It's it's all, you know, just as always, no makeup. Did you notice any marks on Miss Hurd's face? No, no. Did you notice any swelling? No, no swelling, no. There's no nothing. There's no swelling, no bruising, no redness, no cuts, no... I don't even, you know, nothing. Turning back to uh, May 21st for a second, when you first heard that Ms. Hurd told you Mr. Depp had hit her, do you recall that? Say that again? When Ms. Hurd told you that Mr. Depp had hit her on May 22nd. Yeah, my birthday. <laughs> How did you feel <laughs> my hearing birthday. her say that? What's the relevance? Did nobody in the, in the jerks and the gallery over there laugh at that? I was fucking giggling, bro. I hit her on May 22nd. He said, my Yeah, birthday. my birthday. How did you feel <laughs> hearing her say that? that was funny? All right, All right. It's just me. What's the relevance to how he felt? I, think, I mean, it's a present sense impression of how he well, perceived that in that moment. I'll sustain the objection. <sighs> Mr. Bruch, did you see Ms. Heard at all the rest of that week of May 23rd? No. Yeah, if you guys if you guys at all feel like this part of it is kind of slow, what's going on now is clearly this is Johnny's attorney that's trying to get clear, concise answers for everything, um, just to line up the story. But after this, Amber's two brain cell attorneys, shared brain cell, they're gonna come up and I heard Isaac gets pretty frustrated. So that's coming, but let's keep watching this. Did you learn at some point in time that Ms. Heard had filed for divorce from Mr. Depp? Yeah. How did you learn that? I learned it from the internet. After the weekend, around as probably Monday, Sunday, either Sunday or Monday, I'm on the internet and I end up seeing a picture of it was the Friday of that the, that week, the past week, and there's a picture of Amber wearing a black morning dress and with this brown mark on her cheek, and that she's out, she's been to a, a divorce, uh, you know. She went to go file for divorce. That's how I found out. Were you surprised when you saw that? Surprised is not the word. It's like, what the hell is this? What's going on? At any point when you had seen her um, during that prior week, had she told you that she intended to file for divorce? Objection. How is that uh, leading? I'll, 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 go ahead. You can answer the question, sir. This is a question. What's the question again? Thank you, Penny. At any point when you had seen her during that week, had Ms. Heard told you that she intended to file for divorce? No. 
No, she never once. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday or Friday, not even see it. No, there's no. I, I'm clueless. She does not. She did not say anything about divorce. So, what did you think when you saw those pictures um, and read the articles and learned that she was filing for divorce? Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Objection. Relevance to what right. he thought. It, I mean, it relevance. builds on all of the testimony he's given previously. Uh, so I'll sustain the objection. When did you see Ms. Heard next after that? She knocks on my door June 3rd, Friday, Friday, a Friday night, June 3rd. <laughs> she knocks at, she knocks on my door around 11 o'clock is, is the next time that I see her. And what happened when she knocked on your door on June 3rd? I opened the door. I opened up the door and actually, you know, something I'll say is, hey, how you doing? You know, to say hello. So I open up the door and say, hey, how you doing? And she looks at me and she says, not feeling so hot that uh, I made some food. Would you like to come over and eat with me? And at that point, after you know everything I've seen, I looked at her I said, listen, me and you, we're not gonna talk anymore. After everything that I've just seen all week long from, from the past couple the past week and change, mm. you, uh, listen, I'm confused, I'm angry, and I'm yeah. frustrated by everything that I've seen. He thinks and it's a setup. I think the best thing is for me and you that we don't talk anymore. Yeah, he's sniffing up a setup. Did That's, you say anything in response? Yes, she, in response to that, she looks at me and she says, I told Johnny I don't want anything. The lawyers are making me do all, all of this. Bull, bull, you, yeah, yeah, we don't know. And that's not I, true. You know, that's what she said. Did you respond to Ms. Hart? No, what I was thinking was that to me, when after saying that, after she said that to me, I'm thinking to myself, gay cock, I'm young. Hey, how, you know. Oh, I'll sustain that objection. Next question. Object. I, I, okay, she said objection to what he was thinking to himself. <laughs> Like that was gonna lead to some incriminating evidence. <laughs> Did you see any injuries on Ms. Hurd's face on June 3rd? They're like, about? Isaac's opinion is too dangerous. No. Did you ever speak with Ms. Hurd again after that? Well, she said to me uh, after uh, that, the lawyers are making me do all of this. Uh, then she's, uh, I was just looking at her and then she ended what she was saying by saying, uh, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. Uh and I closed the door and never wow. talk to her ever wow. again. Wow, you know what? I feel like a lot of us have used the phrase, I'm sorry you feel that way. And sometimes it actually is pretty appropriate because maybe the other person is just super left field. But when somebody uses it that often, you know, there's a point that you're making me feel this way, probably. Do you guys know what the number one abuser phrase is? There is no reason to say this if you're a victim. There is none. And Amber Heard not only said this phrase, but she was caught saying it on video or in an audio recording. It was, go tell everyone, no one will believe you. Only, only, only abusive people say that, period. Mr. Bridge, did you have any interactions with the staff of the Eastern Columbia building about Ms. Heard's allegations against Mr. Depp? Yes. And at some point, uh, did you see a security video taken in the Eastern Columbia building? Yes. When was that? At sometime in June, maybe two weeks in or something like that. It's two, three weeks in. Can you describe um, what you saw in that video? Yes, I can. It was a video of uh, Amber and Whitney waiting uh, at the elevator, a mezzanine level, coming from the garage, obviously, and uh, waiting for the elevator. What? I got one more. Somebody said, and his messages, they are really weird. It's not like just talking shit. First of all, I hate the word weird. I really hate the word weird, Tabby. Because what does that mean? When you say, I feel weird, that means you don't know what you feel. And what I find is a lot of people when talking about, you know, evidence or little things like this, they say, oh, this is weird. And in situations like this, what I find it means is you're waiting for somebody to show you what the majority opinion is so that you can go with it because you don't know how you feel. So what I urge you to do before I tell you my opinion of the text messages is I encourage you to read those messages and figure out what you feel past, oh, this is weird. Because what does that mean? This is weird means absolutely nothing to me. Tell me what you feel and then I'll tell you what I feel. But you need to figure out how, how you feel first. A mezzanine level coming from the garage, obviously, and uh, waiting for the elevator and Whitney does this to Amber, pow, and hits her, to like faking hitting her in the face, going pow, and then they start laughing. 
did Ms. Heard react at all in that video to the fake punch that you observed Whitney throw? Yeah, she's laughing after doing it. They both, uh, you know, laughing at each other, with each other. Mr. Baruch, do you know who Elon Musk is? Sure. Have you ever seen Mr. Musk in person? Okay. Yeah. Oh. Where did you see him in person? First time was, you, uh, okay, this I'm is getting you into the elevator on the rooftop, penthouse level. I'm get going into the elevator and he's coming out of the elevator, going past me. And you guys that are asked, that are saying uh, Elon is weird, Elon's going to be testifying um, in this case. And also, it's my understanding, actually, that James Franco was subpoenaed, which means he had to come and talk about it. And maybe it was the same thing for Elon. So basically, Elon Musk, who briefly dated Amber Heard, was around quite a bit. So let's see... I, I think she dated Elon Musk after Johnny Depp. So he will be testifying, but it's interesting that Elon was around before the divorce. And when did that take place? This is after May. This is sometime June, it could be July, but after May. In that same year, 2016? Yeah. Oh, are we really? And when was the second time that you saw Mr. Musk? Uh, uh, one morning waking up and going and opening up the shades to uh, the bedroom and it's on the second floor and it overlooks the balconies, our joining balconies, because my balcony joins with uh, John and Amber's uh, balcony, and that I, opening up the shades, I see uh, Elon Musk going through the, the balcony door on their side okay. uh, to then walk down a common corridor to that then at the end leads to a, a door that you, then you walk to out where? to the rest of, of the rooftop. And could you go to the pool? You go so to they the were going to the rooftop. So I'm looking out, and I, the view, the the view out the window is of the both of our balconies. So that's where I saw him. And when was that? Oh, I, sometimes it's, it's either June, July, some, but it's after May. This is kind of a stretch. This is my own personal thing. This is just fully like what I would do or what I wouldn't do if I was dating Johnny Depp. I simply would not be on the rooftop alone with Elon Musk. I just like wouldn't. That seems like a, a strange dynamic to me. It sounds like I would feel like my partner would have questions. <laughs> it just seems weird, but maybe they were all really great friends and I'm missing something here, you know? Mr. Bruce, how long have you known Mr. Depp? Met him, I believe in 1980 and uh, what's 42 years? Well, it's gonna be 42 years. Have you ever seen uh, Mr. Depp be violent when angry with Ms. Hurd? Objection leading. I'll have a question, okay. okay. I'm allowed to answer? Yes, yes. What's the okay. question again? Have you ever seen Mr. Depp be, be violent when angry with Ms. Hurd? No. Well, the, from what I said the, from before, there was an argument that I walked in, so there's obviously there's the, that, but have I ever seen him be violent to her uh, with uh, physicality? No. Did you ever Never. see him hit He's hard now. In your three and a half years living at the Eastern Columbia building next to Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard, did you ever observe any injuries or marks on Ms. Heard? Objection leading, Your Honor. All right, I'll sustain as to leading. Okay. Did you ever notice anything unusual about Ms. Heard when you were living at the Eastern Columbia building with Objection her? Objection leading, Your Honor. I'll allow it. I can answer? Yes, sir. What's the question again? Did you ever notice anything unusual about Ms. Heard during the time that you were living next door to her at the Eastern Columbia building? Mm -hmm. Besides having great teeth? No. <laughs> Mr. Bruch, are you appreciative of everything that Mr. Depp has done for you? Objection, Your Honor. L leading and relevant. Uh, all right, I'll just say it's a leading. <laughs> Mr. Bruch, how do you feel about what Mr. Depp has done? That, that question kind of like makes it call out like, oh, you know, Johnny Depp has done a lot for you, right? Are you appreciative of it? You know, which obviously Amber's team is probably going to bring that up because they're going to be like, Oh, uh, Johnny, he housed you for this amount of time. How much money has Johnny given you? But he's not allowed to answer that question. For you. Objection. Well, you know what? No, I'll go ahead. Okay, go ahead. No, I think it's okay. I think All it's right. Go ahead. Let me ask the question. <laughs> uh, she objected her objection. You could just answer the question, sir. And the uh, question Dude, is, I can't wait for that attorney. How do you feel about everything that Mr. Depp has done for you? Oh, come on. This is, it's unreal. It's, you know, you think too much about it, you're going to cry that uh, uh -oh. I appreciate everything that he's done for me. Um, you know, I, 
it's like stuff you can't pay back. Dude, having somebody like uh, like a Johnny Depp or somebody in your life that has a lot of connections, a lot of like finances, is generous, trusts you, cares about you, that shit can change your life. It really can. But also, it doesn't make the person you know, indebted to you. Like there, there, I'm sure there are plenty of people that have put clothes on your back and you could cut them off next week if they start acting up, you know? Like, it seems like he's been a good friend to him and done a lot for him. Would you lie for him under oath? Oh, no, 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 no. Meeting. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Let's start with the makeup. Now, you know that Ms. Heard was- Excuse before. me. Wait. Oh, I didn't sorry. hear the beginning of what you started saying. I said, let's start with- It's Amber's attorney. <laughs> <laughs> Here she comes. I said, let's start with the makeup. Okay. Okay. You're aware that Ms. Hart, Ms. Hurd has both modeled and been an actor and had been for many years before you met her, correct? I knew she acted. I didn't know she was a model. Okay. <laughs> Are you aware that she had That's a commercial uh, uh, agreement with L'Oreal, for example? When now or back then? What, what's your knowledge? I don't know any of that. Okay. Have you ever been with Ms. Hurd? Objection! Relevance? Did you just fucking promote L'Oreal? L'Oreal paid you! When she has put makeup on. I've been in the room, yeah, when she's putting, when makeup was getting put on her. Yeah. Yeah. When makeup was being put on her, was this for some acting role or something like that? It was an event that they were going to. Mm -hmm. So that was somebody else applying makeup to Ms. Yeah. Hurd, who was going to have some gala event that she was going to. I swear yeah. to God, if she says, but you've never seen Ms. Hurd herself put on makeup. Yeah, because the bitch got a makeup artist following her around all the time that apparently hasn't seen anything either. Okay. Have you ever been with Ms. Hurd in her bathroom or anything when she's applying her makeup? Oh. No. Okay. Do, do you, are you familiar with Amica cream? No. What is it? Amica? No. Amica? Yes. No. Oh. Okay. Do you know what type of foundation Ms. Hurd uses? This is no. so d you know Of course of not. Of Ms. course not. Nobody that I know can name what foundation I use. Nobody. <laughs> Definitely not. My ex-husband's best friend. <laughs> like, this is so dumb. Do you know what type of tint Ms. Hurd uses? I have no clue. Do you know what types of powders Ms. Hurd uses? Because she, she uses very good oh. ones. So when you're saying that you didn't notice any makeup, would it be fair to say that you yourself are not familiar with what type of makeup Amber Heard uses it's, on a daily I say basis? I see it all the time. No, I do see it. I don't know what she uses on a daily basis. That's my point. Now, the first time oh, that come you on. saw her, which was May 22nd, yeah. Ms. Heard was there. Were you aware she was on her way to somebody else's birthday party? Not yours, but somebody else's that day. No. Okay. Can you tell me what her hairstyle was that day? It was just down. Down as in? You remember? Just regular. How she, uh, she has it up now. She's got some kind of hairstyle. Okay. But no, she's, she was no hair down. Come on, Regular, Isaac. no makeup, just hanging. Come well, on. when you say no makeup, you don't know she was not wearing makeup, correct? For a fact? Correct. No. And you don't know whether she had applied Amica cream, correct? Stop. What is Amica cream? No. And I you, didn't even know what Amica cream is. And you don't know whether she had had applied concealer or foundation. I, or, I love how this uh, the defense attorney, she thinks that because she's getting a couple of no's from Isaac that she must be going down the right line of questioning. But does she think that we're dumb? This is the first line of defense. Get creative, lady. Like, come on. This is the most... <sighs> Powder or tint, correct? That's correct. Okay. Now, if she's going yeah. out to a party, yeah. do you think she would want to have her bruise exposed? Objection, Your Honor. What's the objection? Cause for speculation. Yeah. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Next question. So True, true, uh, beautiful. So in that statement, Amber Heard's a defense attorney says, so is it possible that you didn't see the bruise because she had on makeup? But they actually objected it because she's implying that the bruise was for sure there, which is speculation. Great call. Now, if she's a good attorney, she'll rephrase the question here to say like, okay, okay, fine. Do you think that if she was going to a party, she would be wearing makeup? But that's still so stupid because like, she's not at the party yet. She's with... This dude and the security guard, she clearly hasn't gotten ready yet. Like, come on, man. Sustain the objection. Okay. Next question. So, 
Um, do you recall what Ms. Hurd was wearing that day? You know something? I could have sworn she had on a schmuck dress, a uh, hippie dress at that particular time, but I could be confusing it with June 3rd. She's got this Victorian type of uh, uh, long hippie dress that has embroidery, and I, she definitely was wearing that that, that night. All right, but, but uh, let's go back she's, to May 22nd. Do you yeah. recall what she was wearing? I could have swore she was wearing, uh, wearing a, a, another schmata dress that I've seen uh, hanging around uh, uh, the apartment with. And, and do you recall what color? No. Okay. Do you recall what jewelry Ms. No. Hurd was wearing that day? No. That's okay, okay Isaac. We're now, with you. We're you with you, You indicated that there was a security guard there, and there yes. was Josh Drew. Yeah, the two locksmiths. Okay. So and you... also in the apartment, for a fleeting second, multiple people, person multiple went people went walking by and who seemed to me look like it was Raquel Pennington, but it could be bring in Raquel. It could have been uh, another friend that was supposedly staying with them. Bring in the other okay, friend. So you saw somebody come by. So, so how no, many, how go go through the living room and then they're out of the picture because they went upstairs. So they're at this. That's somebody that else was in that room and but walking by. Okay. Yeah. So, and you talked to Josh. What did Josh tell you? Bro, this is what I'm talking about where it doesn't make sense. And I once again just want to say this very, very, very clearly. Earlier I said, wow, isn't it crazy that Amber is saying that these bruises happen and nobody saw them? In highly abusive relationships, what do they do first before it re really all hell breaks loose? They isolate you. They isolate you from your friends. They isolate you from your family so that the abuse can be carried out in private. So a lot of times DV victims are people that don't have a family that they can go back to. Their friends are all gone. Their friends are way beyond it. Oh my God, I still remember telling my friend for the first time he hit me and she just kept cleaning the table. And she did this because she had been telling me for the longest time to leave him. You know what I mean? So she was done at this point. So real true DV victims, they ultimately lose everyone. And that's how they get trapped in the relationship before it gets this bad. Amber not only had friends, colleagues, coworkers, houseworkers, Johnny's friends, security guards, makeup artists, maids, all of these people around her and nobody saw anything. Nobody saw anything. This is not a case of a, a battered woman that has been isolated in her house 24 seven and she's just going to work and back, work and back. This is a woman that was around like everyone constantly and nobody saw anything. I just find it so hard to believe. I really do. So, and you talked to Josh, what did Josh tell you? Josh when? Drew, he took you to the side. What did he tell you? Objection, your honor, hearsay. All right, I'll sustain the objection to hearsay. All right. Before mm. you spoke with Josh Drew, dude. Also, in the other guys, room. we can kind of also see sometimes where the judge is going a little bit, like when she sustained. It sometimes, not always. But if sometimes. anything had been said about what Mr. Depp did the night before, objection to the extent it calls for hearsay, Your Honor. Right. Yeah, hearsay objection. I'll sustain that objection. I, I, I'm, not, I'm asking what if anything. I, that was still solicit hearsay. Well, what, but he already testified about what Amber said. I'll go back to that. Okay. So what exactly did Amber Damn, she's struggling. <laughs> As I was walking up the first time, she t turned to me and said, Johnny came by last night and got violent. So I'm changing the locks on one, penthouse one, three, and five. Don't worry about your place. Okay. Did you ask her for any more specifics? On what about she meant by getting locks. violent. Huh? Did you ask her for any specifics about what she meant by he came by and got violent? No. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to jump you to the next day for a few, and then uh, I'm going to come back. But let's go to the next day. Okay. So the next day, you okay. testified that you saw her twice, correct? From Sunday? No. Monday I saw her once. In the morning, uh, it's, I want That's to That's when she came 12. by to ask if you could have the key or that you could leave the key for the house. Right. right? For Hilda. And you weren't feeling well, right? That's right. Okay. So... You wouldn't have been standing very close to Amber, right? Because you were sick? Oh, come on! Well, I opened up the door and I'm holding the door. We're like three feet away from each other, yeah. Okay, and you told her you were sick, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you know where she was going out someplace, correct? She had. She was going somewhere. All right. She wasn't going to be there. All right. Do you know whether she had applied any Amica cream that morning Please. to her face? It's Arnica cream. It's Arnica cream. No. Do you know whether she had applied any concealer to her face that morning? No. 
Do you know whether she had applied any foundation that morning? No. Do you know whether she had applied any tint that morning? Somebody get her Brittany's lawyer. He finished this up real fast. Now, the next day... I can tell you, she looked like she wasn't wearing any makeup. Right. And and would you agree that (laughs) people who are models and actors can be pretty darn good with putting makeup on so that you can't tell they're wearing makeup? No. Objection, Your Honor. Foundation, cause for speculation. I I think that's a fair question to ask him. I'll sustain it. We bet you do. Do you have any knowledge... Amber Heard's attorney asked a question. Johnny Depp's team did objection, calls for speculation. And then Amber's attorney is like, I think that's a perfectly good question. The judge penny was like, sustained. <laughs> Next question. The skills of Amber Heard with respect to putting on makeup. Well, it can't be that good because she's got a friend who is a makeup artist who came over to do makeup, but I don't really know. Right, and, and that makeup artist that comes over does it when she's going to be on some show or in some big public event or gala, right? Yeah. You, yeah, that makeup person, and you're talking about Melanie Iglesias, right? Uh, that right, makeup, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. And that exactly. makeup person doesn't put Amber's makeup on every day for her, does she? Where is I that really makeup know. artist? How many times have you did you see Melanie Iglesias put makeup on Amber? One time. Okay. Wow, love this. It's so interesting to me that Amber is running around town telling everyone that Johnny hit her, Johnny got violent, even going so far as to tell Johnny's best friend of 40 years that he got violent because she expected that he would believe her, right? She's walking around with a security guard. People probably ask her, why do you have a security guard? Oh, Johnny's trying to kill me, you know? However, Amber never let her makeup artist see her bruises. What? No. I'll handle this one on my own. I'm gonna go do it in the bathroom. Even though the divorce is already pending, I don't want anyone to know. I'm gonna go do it in the bathroom privately. It doesn't make any sense. So she wasn't living at Amber's house, right? No, no, no. Okay. I had we I, I hung out with her and her husband and Johnny and uh, and Amber and you know over there one time eating uh, and then another time it was when I met her that uh, seeing her put, do makeup for these guys. Okay, so so you don't. You're not saying that, that Amber doesn't know how to put makeup on herself, correct? Oh, no, I'm sure she does. Okay. But again, I would think she does, you, you know. But for the most, I'll tell you what, over three and a half years, living. Dude, I can't around, wait. Around each other. I can't wait to most, watch Amber's testimony. Part, she's not a makeup wearing person, completely natural. Her, Rocky, total great complexion, Texas uh, natural neck girl next door. No makeup wearing, hanging out. Did Amber ever tell you she was not wearing makeup? Did she ever tell me? In in any of those three and a half years that you're saying she wasn't wearing it around the house, did she ever say, I don't have a stitch of makeup on? As As many times as she's told me, I am wearing makeup, which is, I can't remember. So I don't know. Yeah, no. I, there's not one time I remember that. Okay. saying that okay her so whole argument the hinges day. on the makeup the but the, the milani times, tiktok uh, is pretty her. heavy she's with other people yeah and she's either going out or coming in correct well first time they're coming in and the second time they're going out so they've been out someplace before they're coming in correct objection your honor foundation mm-hmm. i'll allow it okay you can answer the question sir oh i have no clue okay okay but they're they're physically Entering the house. In other words, they haven't been in the house. They're coming to the house. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. I have no idea. And, and, and do you know, so you don't know where they were? No, And so you have not. no idea whether they were out in public someplace, correct? No, of okay. course not. All I right. won't know that. All right. Um, and then the later time that you saw them that day, they were going out. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And do you know <laughs> whether Amber had any Amica cream on that day? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And I'll try to make this faster. Do you know whether Amber was wearing concealer, foundation, powder, or tint that day? Yes. I don't know. Just say yes. Now, the next day, I think you said it was she and Whitney. Is that correct? On Wednesday, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, And again, do you know whether she was wearing any Amica cream? (laughs) 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 Sir, if you could just answer this question. I'm totally sorry. I'm sorry. That, uh, no. Oh my God, dude. This is truly comedy. Check this out, guys. It's actually called Arnica Cream, which by the way is so funny because I've never heard of a miracle cream that makes your uh, bruises go away. But here they are selling it on some sketchy website. 
But if you look closely, it's called Arnica, but the way the label is, because the R and the N are so close together, it looks like Amica. They just like Googled bruise cream and they were like, admit it into evidence. Admit it. <laughs> Put it in there. And do you know whether she was wearing concealer, foundation, powder, or tint? No. Okay. Can you tell me what Amber's hairstyle was on the 23rd? That's Monday. Like I said, when she knocks on my door. <laughs> Her whole defense rests on, you don't remember anything, I was wearing makeup. So lying, I was wearing makeup, and then trying to gaslight you out of what you saw. <laughs> like, that's it. That's their whole defense. The whole, the whole defense. Guys down. Okay. Can you tell me what she was wearing that day? Not exactly, but if I, if best of my recollection, a pair of dungarees, and a t-shirt okay. at the time when she knocked on my door to give me the key. If she went home to go change or something like that, I got no clue. Okay. Do but you remember what color the t-shirt was? I think it might have been white, best of my recollection. Do you remember what jewelry Amber had on? Oh. Okay, let's go to the next day, the, the Wednesday, and you've got all these people here. Ne next day is Tuesday. Okay, next day oh. Tuesday is when you had the, the bunch of people coming together to her house the first time, right? Oh. What was she wearing then? She really wanted to glaze over that, huh? <laughs> I don't know something. I do remember uh, of a, a women's beige uh, long coat, kind of like a, a woman's, uh, not a raincoat, but it could be similar to that. It was a beige long, kind of looking like a business coat type of thing, a female version of a Colombo jacket. Okay, and what was she wearing under it? Oh, I have no, I, I have no clue. Okay. And do you remember what jewelry she was wearing? No. Okay. Now, you said that on the 22nd that you kissed her on the cheek. What day? Uh, the 22nd, your birthday? 22nd, Sunday, yes. Okay. So, he got when his you showed it the straight, first bro. time, you went like this, right? And then the next time when you said you did the kisses, you went like this. Oh, come on. What's your typical way of come kissing on. women when you greet them? I did, I'm not understanding any of what you just did. Okay, so when you, well, well, I'll just leave it at Amber. When you, I take it that you would regularly kiss Amber on the cheek when you used to say hello and to say oh, goodbye? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely. And, and tell us how you did that. Objection. Can you just show us how you do that? Which time, regularly? Did, which, did you have a different way of kissing her on the cheek different times? Or did you have a, a general way that you would greet or say goodbye to, to Amber with kisses? Regular, it's a regular, you know, you give a, you give a peck on the cheek goes, you know, like you just touch cheeks and, and okay. that's that. So it's, it's, it's a pretty soft, it's kind of like a, almost a superficial one or is it a really hard one on the cheek? What? No. <laughs> no. It's, uh, you know, just, what are uh, you yeah, you kiss them. What are you trying to, this is the epitome of somebody trying to get a gotcha moment. It's <laughs> on the Comical. side of the cheek. I don't know, pressure wise, what kind of talk? Uh, is there? What the uh, I mean, is it, is it just one of these little pecs, uh, or is it is it much harder? No, it's a regular. You you, you touch, <laughs> you know, door. you touch and boom, and that's that. Okay. So, so you think it was pretty hard? You you peck her on the cheek pretty hard every time? Objection, Your Honor. No, I'll, I'll sustain objection. Is understand. he trying to? Is she trying to say? Yeah. So you you might have caused a bruise. You may have caused a bruise. <laughs> okay. Cause. You also showed that you did one like this. Did you ever do it a two kiss when you greeted Amber? We need to see her do it again. No, I'm not European. I'm from Brooklyn. <laughs> no. That, no, you give, you know, Europeans do the, you know, right. both sides. Sometimes you even three. Bam, bam, bam. bam you know, but, you, so, but you never did no. that? No, no, no. All right, let's go to the fake punch. I want to make sure that I understand. Exactly oh, what oh now she want to change yeah. subjects. You said huh? that it was two to three weeks into June. Is that correct? That you saw it? It's got to be somewhere in that period. Okay. To some somewhere in the the first three, if the as I would say the first three weeks of June. All right. Uh, yeah, somewhere like that. Can, can you recall which week? No. Okay. So you saw Whitney and Amber. Was there anyone with them? No. Okay. Okay. Do you recall what either of them was wearing? Who was Whitney? Long jackets. Yes, actually I do. Okay. Long jackets. You okay. know, overcoats. And how was Amber's hairstyled that day? Down. 
pull back. Dude, I feel like she always is asking what were they wearing that day or what were their hairstyles. At first, I thought she was going to try to like show like, oh, here's a photo of Amber at the birthday party that she went to that night or something like that. And you were wrong about what she was wearing. She's not even doing that. It feels like she's trying to discredit his memory to the jury by asking what was she wearing that day and what was her, what was her hairstyle. Bitch, it was eight years ago. <laughs> Hold back or well, no? it's when I say, you know, it's like hairs down, you know, maybe because of something around the neck or whatever, the hair is, you know, flip back or whatever, not tie back. I don't remember if it was tie back, but just where it's full, it's full okay. that I remember. Okay. Yeah. So, you can remember now, what somebody looked like on an they important standing day. standing when you watched this? This is uh, the, where were they standing? Yes. They're standing. Wow. Waiting. Even more nitty gritty details trying to discredit his memory. What was she wearing? How was her hair? Where was she standing? Oh, shut the fuck up. For one of the elevators. This ain't gonna fly in Virginia. Floor, where there's, I guess you could see, yeah, there's cameras that, you know, has that view of the, 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 of the elevators on so the mezzanine on the, floor. So they're on the mezzanine level. Yeah, this is the waiting. same level. This is the same level. There's apartments on that level. And that, that's how the exit, how you get out to go to the garage. And so were they coming back from the garage? Well, if they're standing at the elevator outside, that it could be and wait. Wow. Let me just give you guys a little tidbit here because you might be wondering, why is this case being tried in Virginia? I thought that was a little bit strange. Let me be very clear to you guys. I am from Southern Virginia, okay? <laughs> and if you guys watch my stuff, y'all know I don't take no shit. I smell bullshit from a mile away and I will say something. I found so many people that are from Virginia that are just like this. Virginia people are just, they real as hell. I don't know what it is. And there's other places like that too, but there's just something about people from Virginia. And I thought that this was very interesting that it's in Virginia. So I looked it up and it says, according to Mr. Depp's lawyers, one of the reasons why they decided to sue in Virginia was because of the state's anti slap legislation, which is not as wide ranging in California. Well, what is anti slap you ask? anti slap laws are intended to prevent people from using courts and potential threats of a lawsuit to intimidate people who are exercising their First Amendment rights. So basically, they moved this case to Virginia, basically because they had a better chance, but so that Amber can't do any shady stuff. There's a big chance that Johnny Depp is gonna lose this case. It's a defamation case, you know? If uh, Amber Heard's team wraps this up with, your job as jurors is to go into that room and decide if Johnny Depp never hurt Amber Heard, which somebody could decide, well, some of the things that Amber said happened, so no, she didn't lie, whatever. There's a chance that that could happen, but as corny as it sounds, I think it's really real. Johnny could lose this whole case, but he has absolutely won the court of public opinion. An overwhelming number of people are out here to support Johnny Depp. And let me also tell you, I am not afraid of Amber Heard's testimony coming up or her cross-examination because any information that she wants to put out there has already been done in the UK case. So Johnny knows what's coming out and he's not afraid of it. The only things I could see are like Elon Musk or James Franco having some really interesting pieces coming out, but I am absolutely not afraid of the future test testimonies and I'm sticking in my position. Tell me where they were each standing. As I'm watching the video, this tape, uh, Amber's on the left and Whitney's on the right. Okay. And then tell me, just take us through. <laughs> tell me what you saw. Amber's on the, Amber's on the left. Whitney's on the right. They're hanging out. Can I stand up? Yes, sir. Okay. So All right. He's, he's getting here's dynamic. Amber, here's Whitney and they're hanging, waiting for the elevator. And Whitney does, they're looking at each other, yapping or whatever they're doing. And Whitney goes like this. Pow. Just a, a fake pow. And then they both start laughing. And then they're just standing there. Yeah, that's so funny. Because if I was telling my friends about being hit by my husband, I would love for them to make jokes about hitting me. I would love for them to throw fake punches at me. I would laugh so hard at that. I would think that that was so, so, so incredibly funny during the most painful and fearful time of my life. I would love my friends to make jokes about that. <laughs> doing yapping, yeah, doing what they're doing. And how close does Whitney's fist get to Amber? 
Oh, I'm watching this. It's a fake thing. It's not. It's, right, it's not but, like she went and she hit her no, own no, no, sister. No, no, no. But I'm she asking how close. She, she just, you know, going power. If here's my face, if here's if if here's my face, you know, it's just coming by. You know, fake punch going by. Just, you know, that far. Okay. Just making believe. Just make him believe. Okay. It's a belief punch. Okay. And and then they both laugh, you say? Yeah, they both, you know, they just start, you know. D did you watch them get on the elevator? No. Okay, so the part that you saw, they the elevator never opened during that time. That's that's right. Okay. That is correct. And, and how many seconds would you say, or minutes, would you say this little clip was? Oh, what I saw was... 10 seconds, uh, 15 what is she seconds. What doing? Okay. And do you recall what day that was? That I saw this? No, no, no. W was there a date on this, the video? Oh, I don't, I don't, uh, I, if there was, a, it wasn't something that I acknowledged. Okay, good, good, thank you. All right, now let's go back to the argument that you witnessed between Mr. Dude, okay, Gap real quick, I chat. On a scale of one to 10, how much do you like Isaac? <laughs> I, he strikes me as like a, he strikes me as somebody that you would totally want to be your friend just because they would always have your back and they're very buddy buddy. And you know what? He seems very genuine. Like he seems like he would smell the BS from a mile away. He just does. He just seems like that type of dude. And look, and I keep saying it. I'm biased. If you're watching my content, I am biased. Okay. But I feel that way. I feel that way. Very personable. Definitely somebody that I would keep around for 40 years. Actually, Ms. Hurd, who was on the phone or the speaker phone. Do you recall testifying about Say that? Say this again. Start again. Start yes. Again. Let's go back to you testify yeah, real that you observed an argument between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd. Do you recall that? You came into the okay, room. Give us the details. Mr. Depp had yeah. with Amber on speaker phone. Do you recall that? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Mr. Depp was drunk. Would you agree? Yeah. Okay. And okay. do you recall that Amber was actually in London, not New York? No. You don't recall that? No, I thought it's, it's, I think I thought it was she was in New York. Okay. And you recall that Mr. Depp was accusing Amber of sleeping with somebody, right? There was somebody else in the room oh with her. Oh, my and God. That's, that's, and that's what they were arguing about. Are you sure that Mr. Depp... I can't handle this. We've been hearing murmurs that Amber might have been cheating, and I I despise it. I don't like cheating. I don't like it at all. I didn't, and it's so funny that a lot of us didn't factor that in to the equation, and the abuse was enough for like people to side with Johnny. But if it fully comes out in this trial, like, and there's enough information or evidence, I've heard that there was a video of her snuggled up on somebody in Johnny Depp's elevator. I gotta wait till I see it. But if that's in this case, oh, the internet is gonna blow up. I swear, I, bro, I swear. I, I know a lot of people are saying it's Elon Musk. Oh, and it's James Franco. If there's enough proof, I'm telling you, Amber's done. She would be done. You know how many people love Johnny Depp? And you gonna cheat on him? We're mad at you. We mad. But I'll wait. Are you sure that Mr. Depp wasn't thinking there was someone in the room and she was trying to tell him there wasn't somebody in the room? He, uh, say that again? <laughs> Are you sure he wasn't saying someone was in the room and she was trying to convince him there wasn't anybody in the room? Well, he said that, that he heard uh, the other voice. Okay, and were, did you hear the voice? Oh, no. Okay. I walked in there already, it's, this is already in motion. Right, and Amber's saying, why are you saying that, right? Amber was, Amber was saying, oh, come on, baby, why are you being like this? What are you, what? What are you doing? Come on, Johnny, what, what? You, there's no need, to, why are you being like this? What? Right. And it was taunting. How is it taunting to say, why are, why are you accusing me of having somebody in my room? Because they were in the midst of no solution. At that point, it's, it would be, if it's instead of taunting, saying, listen, John, let's talk tomorrow and let's end this conversation right now and every and and we'll talk tomorrow and we'll get to an understanding because there's not going to be any solution right now. But there was none of that. It was just con continuous. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. So and that kept it going. If if Mr. Depp in his he knew. state was suffering from delusions. And Whoa! thought he heard a voice and wasn't. Do you think it would have been reasonable for Amber to be saying Dude. what's going on? Why are you saying this? What's going on? Uh -uh. Objection, Your Honor. Speculation. 
I'll allow the question. You can answer it. You can answer the question, sir, if you. Mm -mm. Would I think it would be what? If if Mr. Depp was suffering Amber's from Amber's done. Voices, and there wasn't Am anybody Amber's in the room done. who hadn't heard a voice but thinks he's hearing a voice, would it be reasonable for Amber to be trying to figure out what's going on? She's ruined. Objection, Your Honor. Hypothetical speculation. I'll sustain a speculation to that question. I feel so and, sick. And the bottom line I'm zoning is, out. I'm in on the call, sick. So you don't know. Because like I, I kind of posted about this the other day. Like the the suspicion that James Franco. I can't believe this. And also, do you guys know that this trial basically already went? They they already went forward with this trial in the UK, but there were no cameras, and so all of those dirty little details got basically lost in translation. They were just lost. And so Johnny fought, he and his team fought to have cameras in the courtrooms so everyone can see everything that went on in that UK trial. And if there's more proof that Amber actually was actively cheating on him with people that were essentially his colleagues in the, like, you know, James Franco were like, I don't know how she got involved with Elon Musk. What is he doing coming over to Johnny's house? Ooh, I'm gonna be heated. I'm going to be real heated. He said first or whether there was any voices, correct? Whether he heard voices yes. besides hers? Yes. No, I didn't hear the beginning of the conversation. Okay. And then after the hang up, he went straight to bed, right? No, after the first hang up, yeah. she, she calls back again, which uh, was, was, was it necessary? I don't know. Do and then a third time- she knew do you know whether she knew whether he accidentally hung, hung up or not? That he accidentally hung up? Right. Do you know whether she knew whether whether he hung up intentionally or accidentally? No, I, it's, it's the same okay. way that I wouldn't know if, like, you know, yeah, she didn't know that the telephone line got cut. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, so after the three calls that you testified about, he went straight to bed, right? Went to the couch and laid down. Right. And, yeah. and he was drunk. Yeah, and, went, and he went, went to sleep. Yeah, he went out. Do you know whether he'd taken any drugs that night? No. You have known, uh, you've already testified, you've known him for 42 years. He, yeah. You didn't pay rent at the penthouse, correct? No, no one did. Right, right, right. Okay, and then after you finished at the penthouse, you went over and lived with him in Sweetser, correct? I live in uh, one of his house, uh, house that he owns on Sweetser. And you still live there? Yes. And rent-free, correct? Yes. Okay. Sure. And uh, is, it has, other than the 100000 you never paid that back, right, the 100000 that he's given you? No, that's not. That's a thing that, that that's a thing for me. When I, if the, how I look at it and stuff, at some point I would love to uh, pay it back, pay back uh, some that money. But that's not something that is expected. That's he's expecting. Would you say so, you're kind of beholden to Mr. Dell? No. Oh, I knew she was going to bring that line of questioning uh, up. I knew he, it. He's giving you $100,000. How, how funny is that? How hilarious. Ha, 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 That she literally tried to object this lady's line of questioning when she referenced everything that Johnny Depp has done for her, but then she can just go on a little bullet train straight down this. Put you in that nice. Of, I'm sorry. I started. I didn't hear the whole question. Can he, you say he, it again? You were rent-free in, in penthouses for a number of years, and now you've been rent-free ever since in Sweetser? That's, that's a nice friend. Yeah, okay. And you're, I think you testified already, you're pretty angry with Ms. Hurd, right? When? I, I wrote it down that you Oh, were... about all the phony, about the phony pictures what? that were that were taken and put in uh, tabloids and about the fake narrative and oh. about, uh, oh. and the oh. way she's uh, trying oh. uh, trying to got a, 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 a fraudulent oh. DV claim to extort and blackmail oh. uh, a man, uh, yeah, that kind of got me uh, uh, Pretty frustrated, angry. confused, angry, upset. Yes, which is why I said the best thing for us to do is not to talk to each other. Okay. And, yes. And was it fair to say you're still angry with her? Oh, you know something? It's six what years. Oh, good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Years. Am good I answer. angry anymore? I'm not, you know, I, what I am is tired. And I want this all to end. Her to go heal, him to go heal. So, you know, so many people are, have been affected by this malicious lie that she started and she created, and it's Beautiful. gone out the door Beautiful. and around the world. And so I don't need, I, I can't even paint anymore. I've stopped painting for the last who knows how many years, and that's affected by stuff. It's, it's, it's. I don't, I, I'm not angry at anybody. Man. I want the best for her, okay. for her to take her responsibility, heal, take her responsibility. And, 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 and move on, move on. 
And in, leave us alone, John, Amber. John, you know, it's, his family has leave been us completely alone. wrecked by all of this stuff. And it's not, it's, 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 it's not, not uh, it's not fair. It's not right. What ha what That's right, is, Isaac. What happened for so many people to get oh. affected oh. from this? It's it's insane. And Mr. That's, this is how this oh, happened. Oh, I'm Mr. gonna Baruch, cry. If in fact, she's telling the truth. And if in fact, Mr. Depp, who has engaged in enormous rage and domestic abuse and oh, violence, oh shut of the fuck up! Time, shut the fuck up! You can you can't just if she is correct and Mr. Depp engaged in rage and domestic abuse and oh come on, dude. That's, that's what she's saying when she's panicking. She's afraid that the jury is going to be swayed by his strong display and genuine display of emotion. And she's panicking about that. She's worried. So then she's got to slide in those little lines. Nobody asked for that. God, y'all know I'd be getting heated. And if in fact, Mr. Depp, who has engaged in enormous rage and domestic abuse and violence of Amber over a period of time that you wouldn't know about, then maybe it's time for him to take responsibility, don't no. you think? Objection, Your Honor. What's the objection? Speculation. Lack of foundation. Relevance. Oh. Speculation is... It's, it, he just went off on this rant and rave about assuming that she's... You, you asked no, 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 no. Actually, first of fucking all, let's be real. Why did she let Isaac go off on that rant? Because she was waiting for him to slip up and say something that she could question further. But Isaac did a wonderful job of choosing his words wisely. So she let him go on that rant, waiting for a gotcha moment, and she didn't get one. And now she's mad about it. I didn't ask a question that right. launched that. I, I'm going to sustain the objection. Okay, right, next you don't. Question. I'll, I'll ask this. Okay. Mr. Baruch, you don't know whether Mr. Depp has committed domestic violence of Amber Heard, do you? I've never, I've never witnessed. Thank you. I what never saw or question. witnessed whatever type of claim that is, that is being said, ever. Okay. I've never seen him be violent. Since kid, since teenagers from yeah, first meeting. I didn't ask you that. I said you don't it's know a, uh, whether well, we he care. has committed domestic violence or abuse on Amber Heard. Isn't that correct? That's correct. I okay. did not witness any physical right. violence. But you have seen Mr. Depp use drugs as well as drink. And so? Be drunk, correct? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, I how, partake in. I'm going to ask you to take a look. Let's, let's that was that was great. He said, "I've partaken." She tried to line those statements up like they meant s something. Come on, and, and then him being like, "Oh yeah, for sure." Like it's not a big deal, and saying, "I I partake too," you know? Yeah, and and I'm sorry. Wasn't Amber out here getting drunk at the Chateau Marmont every every other night, snorting stuff? Come on, dude. So on this diagram, when you got out of the L was. You said 9.30 today, but in fact, it was between 9.30 and 10 that you came back with your friend, correct? No, it was around 9.30. It could be five minutes one way, five minutes the other way. Could have been... Do you, just... recall, do you recall saying it was between 9.30 nine and, nine, and 10 earlier? Today? No. Did I say that? Do you recall... Do you recall... Are you sure it was 9.30, give or take five minutes, or could it have been between 9.30 and 10? It was 9.30, give or take five minutes, five to ten minutes, either way. And you saw a broken sconce. Correct? No, I did not see a broken sconce. No, yeah, exactly, exactly, she saw a broken glass. broken glass on the floor, shards of glass, pieces Get of glass, back. which I figured could have been a broken sconce. Or possibly, Damn, dude. maybe. I didn't realize how important it is for your your witness to basically be smart, to be able to s sniff out lies and deceit or like leading and stuff like that. Like, because Isaac is listening very, very closely for her little gotcha moments. Yeah, Bro, I told y'all, I've been getting real heated in this case. Y'all see me snarling over here and shit. <laughs> He's very, he's listening for those moments and he won't let her pin him down. Sometimes he'll completely say yes to a question, but usually it's a question that he knows holds very little meaning, but she's trying to give it more than it really has. Uh, the something from uh, the fire department stuff that's around the wall. Isaac's doing so great, dude. From that, but I really, you know, uh, maybe one of the sconces he's, broke. He's killing I didn't see it. A broken sconce. It just saw the glass. Okay, was. Was there typically a sconce right there as you come off the elevator? Yeah, from my memory, there was sconces on on the walls, certain places. Do, do you remember looking that night and saying, 
where did this glass come from? There's there's a broken one. Did you tie it tie it together? No, it wasn't it wasn't uh, it was an it was uh, a, a assumption. It had to come from some of those places because uh, what the what the glass looked like to me looked like it might have come from one of those places. Okay. Could have been you know maybe the stunts. Okay, when you said from the fire thing, what, were you talking about the fire extinguisher? No, 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 there? not the fire extinguisher. Uh, there's a, there was a, uh, in the hallway, that first hallway that you go through, the doors that you walk th through after you get out of the elevator, those doors, the fire doors <coughs> that you close, all right, hopefully no one gets burned to death. That would be, uh, it's, you know, crazy. Um, but then along the wall, I believe, before by the staircase, because there's a door that's... When uh, next to Penthouse Five, then there's the doorway, the stairwell uh, door, and I believe there's a, a, a thing that's by the floor there, that's uh, that's got a, a glass plastic thing around it. Okay. So it could have been something from that. You know, may I approach? All right. Yes, ma'am. Who's coming up? Her. Council. Me. Do you have another copy of the deposition? Is this something for me to Why look at? Why don't you tell her to sit down? Just wait for a question, sir. I asked you a few minutes ago whether you you were sure that it was 9.30, give or take five minutes, or if it could have been somewhere between 9.30 Okay, and she just pulled out some question. kind of receipts. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to ask you to take a look um, at page... 39, do you recall giving your deposition on November 20, 2019? Sure. She's talking oh, about the down UK down case. in Anaheim? Yes. Oh. Uh, yeah, I remember that. And were you under oath at that first... time? Well, that's, yeah. Okay. I think that, that's, that's, I believe so, yeah. It was about two and a half years ago, wasn't it? Two, three, yeah, it's, yeah, okay. like between two and three years, yeah, sure. All right, so if you could take a look, starting on page 39, and if you go to the line 21, where were you on the evening of May 20th? You know, I think it's also a really big red flag when rather than giving me as much evidence as possible, photos, I, I mean, this woman was in the paparazzi all the time, photos, text messages, emails, rather than doing that, she chooses to just attack his character and his memory for this in, the entire duration of since she got up to the podium. That's it. That's all she has. Just attacking his character. This is wild. Do y'all feel like we're in an episode of Black Mirror watching this? Can I say that legally? With, are they gonna like demonetize me or something like that? Black Mirror. Anyways, <laughs> we have more coverage on the case coming, but I'm not gonna overload you guys with videos. I just wanna provide the testimonies that I find the most interesting. We're gonna be looking at the couples therapist of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. We're also gonna be looking at a clinical psychologist that did an analysis on Amber Heard, giving her a 570 question survey, which by the way, Found that one real interesting. And coming up soon, testimonies from Elon Musk, supposedly, and James Franco. I don't know how this is gonna go, but above all, I'm excited to see Amber Heard herself take the stand. I mean, it's crazy. It's like my channel was prime prep, ready for this my whole life. We do court content here, and what else? Narcissist. Now we got a narcissist in the courtroom. <laughs> Excuse me though, I will be back in about a week or so. I'm going to Tahiti. Thanks for 500K. <clears throat> you guys keep me young.